thank you for coming along today. Um, can I just ask you, out of courtesy to the speakers, if you could put your phone either on silent or on vibrate if possible. Um, and here is Sue from Widget. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much for coming and sparing the time, because obviously there's so many things going on upstairs and it's so busy. Um, and it's nice to see some of the people I've been talking to already. So um, I do actually have a surname, which is Sue White. Um, I'd see everybody else had a surname on the introductions, but I'm just Sue from Widget, which actually is quite nice. But um, uh, just a little bit of background. I'm a, the Senior Educational Specialist. I've been with Widget for six years. Uh, my background is mainstream primary teacher. So I was a mainstream primary teacher, a mainstream primary SINCO, and then a local education authority advisor uh, for um, East Sussex LEA. And I've been with the company now for say six years, but I've actually used widget symbols for a long time. Uh, we are 40 this year. Um, I mention this because if you are a widget symbol user, if you know about us and you've been using symbols, we are launching a competition next week to celebrate our 40th birthday. And we are giving away um, A1, it's a big size, isn't it? Um, com playground communication core boards to a school or a school of your choice if you are a parent or an organisation. And all we want is for you to tell us your story about how symbols are used and the impact <coughs> symbols have had on your uh, child, your school, your organisation. So look out for that on our socials and on our website next week. Uh, if you don't know anything about us, we are a UK-based company with over 20,000 symbols in our database. And more importantly, the software that allows you to um, add your own words, your own photographs, and personalise any resource that you make. A lot of things that you purchase are ready-made, are great, but they don't have what you need, and they don't have the right <coughs> coloured T-shirt or the ability to add a photograph, whereas our software allows you to do that and allows you to personalise everything so it's right for your individual. So we're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about why using symbols, so forgive me if there are some uh, specialists in the room, but I think it's really important to understand why symbols are a useful thing, um, working with autistic individuals, but also across the whole spectrum of, of needs. And I think this is one of the statistics that just completely and utterly blows my mind every time I see it. So 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual, and we process visuals 60,000 times faster than we do words. I have the uh, dubious pleasure of living uh, near HS2 building, and every time I go down any particular road, I'm <clears throat> met with signs that tell me that this road is going to be closed between such and such a day for such and such a time. But the time I've driven past it, I haven't got a clue what it said because I didn't process it quickly enough. But a symbol with a date, you know, it would help. We process things much more quickly. And a visual is permanent. You're here, you're hanging on every word, but by the time you've gone out of this room, you'll have completely forgotten what I said. A visual is permanent, words are transitory. And more important in terms of the audience that we're looking at at the moment, when you're in a state of high, high, um, high arousal or anxiety or stress, your language, your brain shuts down and it's difficult to absorb and process visual information, sorry, text or uh, spoken inf information. What happens is that you go into what we call fight or flight mode. And anybody can experience anxiety, it's not just autistic individuals. Um, a friend of mine, um, unfortunately, her husband had a road accident recently and when the paramedics came, she couldn't communicate, she was so stressed, she couldn't get the words out to explain. He couldn't because he was actually, um, you know, again, incredibly stressed, but also um, he had cuts that, that meant it was difficult for him to speak. Uh, so, you know, having a visual, having something he could communicate with, it happens to all of us, not just autistic individuals. But for exist, um, autistic people, anxiety can occur more frequently and be more intense. And your seemingly everyday activities can just become overwhelming. So what happens is your brain, it 
shuts down. So you have what's called the reptilian brain at the back of your head that <coughs> takes over your central executive, your thinking part of your brain. So you can't process that language and you go into this fight or flight mode. Let's move on. And um, also, we know that another time when the mind is under duress is when autistic people experience sensory overstimulation. And they're unable to regulate the sensory inputs from their environment. And their bodies perceive this as threat. So sensory meltdowns are physiological responses, not controllable behavioural reactions. And again, at that moment in time, it's really difficult for the brain to be processing language. A visual that says quiet place or um, too noisy or I need my weighted blanket, whatever it is, can actually really kind of break through that frustration, that anxiety, that breakdown physiological response. So that's visuals, but why symbols? So you get a really good quote there about a photograph including too much information that's irrelevant for understanding. Whereas a symbol gets right to the heart of something. If I were to show you a picture of a duck, a photograph of a duck, it's quite likely that that duck is going to be sitting on a pond. There might be some reeds growing up around or some trees or some willow branches. How do I know that you have understood what a duck is if there's all that going on around? Here's an example from the library. If you look at this, what information are you getting? What information is an autistic person getting? Do we know that the word library actually they're going to relate to this or they're going to be more interested in the carpet, the lights, the tower, because your autistic individual tends to focus on details and not the whole. But the symbol for the library in the right hand corner there is very specific. It's a book within a building. All libraries can be represented in that way. There are other symbol sets. So why would you use widget symbols? Uh, well, because they're the best. <laughs> um, because they are UK based, uh, they're designed to support text, they follow a schema. So that book that is in our library symbol is also part of our librarian, is also part of our bookshop, is also part of read. So you've got that consistency across. They support all ages. I've already had conversations with people today about possibility of using symbols in dementia and Alzheimer's situation because our symbols are age neutral. They go across the whole spin, um, spectrum. And this really important thing, this personalisation. I can change the colour of symbols. I can change the word that goes with that symbol. I can add a photograph if I need to. <coughs> so this session was entitled around the autism support packs. There's a little bit of background in information there about why symbols. But our autism support pack uh, is being designed by our own in-house uh, specialist teachers and teams, uh, but also with uh, input from other professionals. Um, I don't know whether you know them. Karen Watson, she's a Scottish teacher. Lynn McCann from um, <coughs> Reach Out AAC. And Joanna Grace, who's a sensory um, engagement and inclusion specialist and they are part of both of our programs our cloud-based program and our Windows installation program they come free as part of the subscription <coughs> and include more or less everything you would need as a starting point arranged in the four sections of an education health care plan so cognition and learning communication and interaction, sensory and physical, and social and emotional mental health difficulties. But, again, the emphasis being on these are starting point. Everything is fully editable. And in a minute, I'm going to show you how that's done, uh, if the video works. This is what it looks like in Widget Online. Um, so if you're familiar with Widget Online or you're not, if you're not, please come and talk to us upstairs and we can show you more about it and talk to, about, talk to you about the free trial. Um, but it's, this is how it would be organised in those four categories. 
And I'm just going to quickly show you some examples from each of those categories before we look at how you can actually um, edit. Uh, so this is from our sensory and physical needs. Um, and you can see we've got a lot of really lovely sensory symbols, gimbals, resistance bands, trampettes, poppets. Uh, so based on uh, choices that you can make uh, for all of those. Uh, toileting, hand washing is also part of sensory and physical needs. Uh, this is social, emotional, <coughs> mental health, so social stories around going to the toilet, uh, routines, again, all of these. And again, you know, these are all personal. Uh, you've got communication and interaction, so these are core boards. There are also now and next boards, sentence strips, uh, for example. And then the final one, uh, cognition and learning. So there are activities as well uh, for supporting both at home and in school. The school pack contains more cognition and learning activities, just so that you're aware. Um, so that, so we've looked then at why visuals, why symbols, why widget, what's in the autism pack. So what this video now is going to show you is how you can use widget online to actually... Um, use what's in the autism support pack but make it personal make it right for your individual now i don't believe that the uh, volume is working so i will try attempt to talk, um, talk over the video and show you what's going on so i'm going to have to look that way so i can see what it is so uh, forgive me for losing eye contact we might get a bit volume. Yes. We can't. What I'd like to do now is show you how uh, <coughs> a technical person around because it was working on there, wasn't it? Ideally, all resources for. Sorry, this all happens. Um, let's go back and see if I can do it from here instead. <laughs> ah, okay, I've solved it. Sorry, it didn't work with the button. You might be able to hear, but so this is this is the home page again of the autism pack, and we're just looking at uh, different resources. And what I'm going to do is go into a social story and show you how you can change that. Oh my goodness! You know the saying that you never work with animals, people, or IT. I've got two lots of volume going. There are two videos, but I don't know why. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> ah. Oh, maybe, maybe third time lucky. Oh, this this it's playing up, twice. I it's playing you, twice. I somehow you're triggering it twice. I wonder if it's got a delay on it. So if you hit that... Just Can we just turn the volume down on, the, on wherever it's coming from? Sorry, folks. Let's try that. So do you like I just play it on there? Would that be better, do you think? Or? Yeah. That might just work, actually. <coughs> so, shall we try and for a second? There was a bit where I just was talking a bit and just showing. I think now I just want to Is it okay now or not? Um, not got the audio. Well, don't worry about the audio because I can talk oh, over that. I just on. want it to play. It's, uh, I think it, it is playing. Is it? It is playing something. Okay, it's just a. But we'll just hop along and see whether it's got anything. Yes, it does. So. 
There you go. You're yeah. just going to have to give it a few seconds to come Can in. Can I move it a bit further yeah. along? Or well, it, it, no, it seems oh, to have okay. it when it did that, which was the cause of my original Oh, thank you for I think here, the sound there... Oh, is that, was that why we're getting two lots? Well, yeah, I think it was triggering... triggering. Okay. I, th I, think we, I think we might be there. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I know that I was a little bit of me talking before it came into being um, active. So we'll, we'll just see what happens. I think what I was saying was, you know, this is what it looks like. We're going to move into a social story and I'm going to show you how you can amend a person. There we go, look. We can amend and personalise that social story. So this social story is I can get ready for school um, and it's part of the um, community, sorry, the uh, social and emotional health section. So uh, this is what it looks like, um, with all the information there. But what we want to do is add a photograph. So with our software, as well as the symbols in the database, you can actually add your own photograph. So this again, personalises. And although I said photographs are not great, uh, that's not true in certain circumstances and situations. So I do want a photograph of a person and I probably want a photograph of a specific place. Where do I put my book bag, for example? Or this is what um, it looks like in the, in the, the um, bathroom at school, the, the toilets in the school. So you can just add your own photograph um, and just adjust the, the sizes. And that's done through what we call our image library, which has access to <coughs> any photographs that you have on your computer or your iPad. Um, what we're going to go on to now is have a look, I think, at the uh, skin tone. Uh, so we can change the skin tone of any symbol that has skin or flesh. <coughs> So it's more pertinent for the individual, but if you're creating resources for a group, then you can put in different skin tones to make it more representative and more inclusive. So I've just highlighted the whole thing, um, and I'm going to change the skin tone there, uh, whatever is suitable. Any symbol that has more than one person automatically has what we call varied skin tone. So it has, uh, again, it's inclusive. It allows different skin tones in the system. This is the order of getting ready for school, but I'm gonna, in this part here, I'm gonna show you how you can add in more <coughs> information. So I can change what's already there. So, uh, for example, we're gonna brush our teeth and comb our hair. We can just alter it, amend it, make it more personal and more relevant. I can change the colour of symbols. So I think this next one will show how I can change the colour of the coat and the school bag. Because some young people are very literal and they won't put on a blue coat if their coat is not the colour of the symbol. They will only put on uh, the one that is pertinent and relevant to them. And that's done through the colour palette. Uh, and you can just change the colour that you want uh, by doing that. Uh, there are a selection of different colours, but there are also, uh, on that colour palette, you can just go further and you can put the whole range, so any gradient, any colour that you want. That's changing the bag, so changing the bag to a black one. There's some dark grey there as well. And if I wanted to delete a whole page, then I could do that. If I wanted to add in another page, I could do that. So these uh, resources in our um, autism support pack, as I say, they are starting points. And teachers, parents, none of us have time. So actually having something that you've got sort of a start, you can then go on and add into it. Now, what is shown there is that you can change the uh, paper, the background color because uh, it might be dyslexia, Erlen syndrome, you might need a different sort of colour, and it's you know, better on the screen there. So once that resource has been made, it can be saved. You save it as a widget online document so that you can then go back in and edit it if you want to. You can save it as a PDF or you can print it. 
and we have something that we call view. Uh, now this is really important because you don't have to print out our resources. You can view them on a tablet or a phone. And this is what this is going to show now. So if I wanted to go back and uh, change it, I could go into the edited part, uh, the name of the story and edit, PDF there, and then this view. Now what this is, I'm wait for it to catch up with me for a little bit, is when you've created something, at the bottom of that you get what's called a direct link. And that's where it's stored in the cloud, because this is a cloud-based program. And that link is unique to the resource that you've created. So you can then send that to um, a colleague, a grandparent, a friend, you know, the individual. They click on the link. They don't register, they don't pay, they don't sign in. They just click on the link and they will see this view. It's kind of like a PDF online, uh, which you can see, as I say, on a computer, on a tablet, or on a phone. Um, and in addition to actually being able to see it and read it, yeah. it will also play it aloud for you. So if I were to click on the words, it would actually read it aloud. So if you think social story, you think I want to be seeing this before I go into school in the morning, um, mum's driving, dad's driving, child can access the phone, click on it, and it can be read aloud to them as well, setting the scene ready for going into, um, into school or whatever that, that social story is. So that's a really useful resource. Uh, how are we doing for time? Sorry, we a little bit of a, an upset. Sorry, could I just do a time check? Because I know we had an upset with that. Uh... Yeah, um, the next talk's at one o'clock, so... Oh, okay. Okay, okay lovely. Um, there is another changing video one, um, <laughs> which looks at how we can change the templates. So Widget Online is made up of two sides. It has a document side, which is used for free flow text, so things like social stories, instructions. Um, the template side is where you have over 350 pre-made templates that you can go in and populate yourself, or again, use the templates that are already done within the Widget Online um, support pack. I think I'm going to do it from here and see we can get it do it working from here. So I'm hoping that this is going to go into a happy board now. But if it doesn't, we'll just give up. Something it like it's playing. Ah, there we go, there's the what's it? <coughs> that should be playing now. That's playing now, is it? got a feeling that this might be the first, first one all over again, which we really don't want to go into. Have you seen the beginning about five times? It's Is it on the next slide? Ah, that's it, next slide. Yeah, I think I, that's, it, it's got the same starting point, which is the problem. That's okay. Let's, let's hope that this goes. So this, in theory, should go into the happy board which is one of the uh, templates. Uh, if it doesn't, then we... Yeah, there we go. Um, so again, pre-made, ready, different skin tones. You can choose the one that's most appropriate. Uh, you can change any skin tone that you want to anyway, as I've mentioned before. You can change the background colors. And again, you can change the colour of the symbol. So uh, let's have a quick look with this one. Uh, go. So we're going to change, I think, the skin, uh, the background colour on this one, I think. Yeah, so if purple isn't your thing, then you can change the background colour of that cell. Again, lots of different choices. If um, one of the elements in that happy board doesn't make you happy and you want to uh, change that and, supplant and amend it, then you can just go in and type what you want. So shouting doesn't make happy, but in this case, uh, deep breathing does. 
and anything, any choices of symbols is on the right hand side. So if there are two meanings to a word, you can choose the most appropriate one. Um, and then again, this one's going to show, um, I think this one's going to show now adding a photograph. So you can add the photograph into the cell. Um, that's the symbol for the dog, but we're going to put in, I believe it's going to put in a photograph from the image library. Oh no, we're going to search, okay, sorry. Um, with, I'm searching the, the database there for different breeds of dogs. Uh, so we can put in the Collie or the Labrador or the Poodle or whatever it is. And then I think, again, I think on this one now we'll change the colour of one of the symbols, I believe. But I'm hoping that you're getting the um, idea of how easy it is to actually amend the existing resources that are there. So there's their starting points and how easy it is. Oh, I did put a photo in as well. Um, it is easy to, to change things. Um, again, that's going to change the colour like we did on the... Um, Yeah, change the colour of the bus like we did with the bag. So, say so using symbols is really good in all sorts of situations and, and um, setups. It's really helpful to have a set of resources that you can use as a starting point, and uh, which are online in particular will do that for you. Right, let's fingers crossed at the next. No, I think I'm going to do it on here again. It doesn't like my um, my video ones. Okay, and um, so we are on stand ten. That's the number we were given. But if, essentially, if you go um, onto the fourth floor, um, and we're on the, the the back wall, so come and find out more about us, and you can actually have a play if you want to. Um, just a little bit about prices. So it is a subscription program. For parents and carers, we have our home account, which works out at £9 a month or £90 a year. That is PayPal, um, so you can cancel it at any time. You don't have to uh, keep the monthly subscription going for the whole year. Um, and we do have um, a free 21-day trial where you only need to enter your email address. You don't need to put in financial information and then remember to cancel it. It's just your uh, email address in order to have a trial. On the website, which is www.widget.com, uh, which is there, um, there are lots of help and support materials, videos, and access to free webinars that are run um, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week at different times of the day, that you can just sign up for free, uh, come along, get a little demo, which hopefully would work, and um, ask any questions. I'll go back to that one. Our social uh, community on Instagram and Facebook like to post lots and lots of ideas of resources that they've created. So it's a really good place to go to get ideas of how you might, uh, you know, things you might make, things that might be useful in your circumstances and settings. Um, and also uh, joining our mailing list is a good thing to do as well because you find out more about what's going on in, um, in the community of Widget, the competition for example, uh, but we would also signpost you to free resources that are coming or have been made that you can download. So thank you very much. Thank you for bearing with me with the um, technical difficulties. I do apologise for that. I always put things on video because you never know what the Wi-Fi is going to be like and doing things live can actually be quite awkward at times. Uh, but obviously doing things on video can also be awkward at times too. So uh, thank you very much. As I say, come and have a chat. We're upstairs and we'd love to show you more. If there's something new. <laughs>